Welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kira Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira, and I'm at Voices of Dentistry, and this is a girl that I am obsessed with. Um, she came over and said, Hey, do you have a couple of minutes? Because I've got time. And I'm so excited because she's a hero. I watch her all over. Um, I listen to her speak. She's so incredibly cool. And she also, like, not as she just inspirational, but she delivers crazy, awesome content as well. And I like people that just are like strong, powerful women, but also are really, really brilliant. So I'm super excited, oh. guys. Erin Elliott, welcome to the I show. I am completely <laughs> blushing right now. <laughs> Everything is oh, so true. I know. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Thank you very You're much welcome. for that. But I, I do blush because I'm like, no, I'm just a regular dentist. <laughs> and I just happen to be passionate about a message that I have that, right. you know, I think you were at the Dental Success Summit uh-huh, when uh-huh, I spoke, right? Uh-huh. And... Really, I had my kids in the audience too. That Aww. was the first and only time they've really seen me speak. So That's that was kind of fun. But my goal was to get the whole reason I do this and hit the road, you know, is to try to get dentists inspired to know that they can do this. If this mm-hmm. blonde chick from Idaho can <laughs> make sleep successful in her practice, um, I'm you know, I'm hoping they think they can too. It is right. possible. Yeah, for sure. Which I love. And that's why I like you because you you are down to earth, you're humble, but you're fun. And it's like, Hey, I'm just here to do my thing, which I think so many people resonate with. And that's why I feel like your message is so well received. So if you guys don't know, Erin, she is incredible. So Erin, kind of tell us a little bit about what you're passionate about. So those that are listening know a little bit more about you. Well, just a quick synopsis. Um, I graduated Creighton university in 2003. Uh Uh-huh and made my way to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho area, so which is northern Idaho. Yep, I say. It's gorgeous. Um, way up at the northern part, and uh-huh, it is beautiful. Uh-huh. And I was an associate for eight years, a little, a few years longer than I wanted to be, but it was right in the height of the 2007, 2008. Yes. <laughs> oh. Really nothing for me to buy into at the sure. time. Sure. Uh-huh. Um, and now I've been owner, and it's just been awesome to see how as you grow in dentistry. Uh-huh. Show, so should your dentistry. I and, agree. You know, I learned this from T-Boner, T-bo- Tarun Agrawal. I, uh-huh, I teach uh-huh. with um, him with the 3D dentist. Uh-huh. Um, and you don't need to own comb beam to come to my course. It's just <laughs> called 3D dentist. But really what he taught me is that everything in life is kind of this balance between um, time or money, time mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. professional satisfaction. And like so that. as we first got started in practice, you really, we're grind, we're hitting the grind, you know, mm-hmm. we're doing fillings and crowns and trying to work on our efficiencies right. and improve upon the procedures we learned in dental school because uh-huh. we need to start paying bills. Right. In fact, when I first got my, when I got my first paycheck, I thought it was a joke. Like I thought they made a mistake. I'm like, no, there's not that many taxes. Right. So when you go from being a valet parker and a beer cart girl to a dentist, it's a little different tax bracket. I, I'm thinking. Just a smidge. Like, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Um, and then, you know, it, it, now I am increasing my procedures. I thought about what am I sending out the door mm-hmm. that I could be bringing in house. And so I, I'm on my implant journey a little too late. Um, I feel like I wish I had started sooner, but with cone beam, I'm glad I, I use my, you know, I've only known it since my cone beam. Uh-huh. Um, but saying that I can now I'm working three days a week Awesome. and I'm, st- I'm producing better than I did it four days a week. And it's mm-hmm. because an implant in half an hour is a heck of a lot more money than two buckle pits on a five-year-old, you it know, oh, no, I guess a five-year-old wouldn't have buckle pits yet, but, but same, same thing, same right? concept. Yeah. So that's the, in the, and then the professional satisfaction, you know, that gave me time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and then the professional satisfaction comes into doing more emotional dentistry and ortho is one of those things that I have in my practice that uh-huh. I do. 
and not just aligners. I, I actually do some six months miles. Fun. I like that. And then, um, the sleep apnea, um, I'm grateful. I, I discovered it 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I found out that I could help my patients sleep better, Oh. I was sold. And, and if you are Facebook friends with me or even not, um, it's out there that I love to sleep and Same. I can sleep in any situation because <laughs> my husband takes pictures of me with my mouth open and, and snoring away. So are, are you a that, solid drooler on the plane? No, I don't drool. Oh, well, you've got me beat but on my that mouth, one. I cannot keep my mouth. Closed. I can't either. I want to sneak some like glue. <laughs> Yeah, on my lips when I'm ready to go to sleep on the plane so he can't get me. But. Oh, I always have it open. My little sister filmed me. You and I, this is why we're probably great friends. <laughs> um, why I like you more is because we were traveling to Europe together and I was exhausted. I didn't sleep well on the flight over. And so we were taking a bus ride between, um, up to Scotland area. I was passed out, cold, head back, mouth wide open. And my little sister is snapping pictures and videos. Yes. <laughs> I was like, stop. My husband does it all the time, but yes. it's fine. And I've just given up caring. That's exactly <laughs> it. I don't mind making fun of myself. It's fine. If someone will laugh, then go for it. Go for it. So you do a ton of sleep. Like That's how I know you. That's how I've seen right. you in the industry is you have this massive following. You, you're teaching sleep courses. And it's great because so many dentists... I was actually talking to a doctor I'm coaching. And he said, you know, Kira what's my plan if general dentistry goes away? Like, what if I diagnose all these things on these patients and there's no more general dentistry to do? And I hear a lot of doctors get afraid of that. It's this fear mentality of like, yeah. have all these healthy new patients coming through. What do I do? And I suggested to him, I said, I really think you need to expand your scope of dentistry yes. and what you're doing. Look for other opportunities. We have all these baby boomers coming through. Sleep is such a fantastic one to get into. And you do a ton of sleep. So if anyone's like just remotely even interested to get into sleep, what do you recommend for them? Of How can they even get well, into this? Well, I think or... they should be interested in sleep, first of all. Okay. Um, as, a, as an income source in the practice, yes. Mm -hmm. Has it benefited my practice uh, financially? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do this for free or to add a, add a loss, right? Sure. I'm very sure. altruistic, but I'm... I'm a business person too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Saying that if you get into it for just to make extra money, then it's, the, you know, the wrong motivation. Same, right. But there's a lot of, I do this like little family feud game of the top seven excuses are on the board <laughs> and I can smash every one of those excuses. Uh -huh. um, no time. Well, what are we wasting? What are we spending our time on? Sure. Solid. The fillings and crowns. Yeah. That's what? a really good point. Why wouldn't we take the time to implement this? Um, getting the team on board. They mm -hmm. just need, they need to find their why and, and their passion. Everyone has a sleep story of how sleep has impacted their spouse or their sure, mom or their sure. dad or someone. I'm like, I start off the course. I'm like, put a rectangle, the top of your front page of your notes. Who is that person going to be for you? Mm -hmm, and honestly, mm -hmm. as much as I say it's me because I love to sleep, my dad is, is my why. Because I had everything thrown against me. Like, okay, I had a consultant that says, Tells my partner, well, you can just let her do this for a little while. Sleep's not, you know, it's not um, possible to implement. Mm. This is just a fad or whatever. Probably, you, you should probably go thank yeah. that consultant because they probably right? pushed you and motivated you and to then, be better. Yeah, oh, that's the, yeah, that, <laughs> that's the co competitive part of me. Yep, I'm not yep. competitive against other people. You just can't tell me what I can't do. Totally. I'm the same way. I'm like, the reason dental aid team's here is because someone told me I would never be anything more go. than a dental assistant. I was like, and fantastic. Thank yep. you for my opportunity. Um, and then the, also it's just like getting the team on board. The patients are sometimes resistant. I would say the patients are more open to it now that it's it's more well known that dentists sure. can help you. Sure. Um, and then it's medicine. People are afraid of that. It is not dentistry. It's mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. undertaking a new crown procedure, right? Sure, totally. And then lastly, I think um, medical insurance is is the biggest barrier. But mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. goal when we teach is to try to get the get the patient to a point through communication and and other things mm -hmm. um, to get the patient to not care what it costs sure and not solely focus on medical insurance paying for it, it we do utilize medical in almost every patient mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. because we figured it out but if that's what's holding you back don't approach it that way well to me if that's what's holding you back it's just like in treatment planning 
you're going after the the objective that's that's your biggest concern. So a lot of people aren't afraid of that. A lot of people it isn't cost, but we're assuming that it will be there or medical insurance. So we're assuming that and therefore that becomes our reality. Yeah. Spin that around. I mean, if you can save someone's life because of sleep, I think a lot of people are willing to pay a lot more than we think they are to save their they'll lives. Pay, they'll <laughs> pay for an ortho case, but uh-huh. not for something that could potentially save their life. Right. So right. I, I basically... Um, do communicate too is like find that patient's pain point not yes don't sit there and and tell this husband this guy that he's gonna have a heart attack or die or whatever when he doesn't care about the health consequences sure he just wants his wife to stop nagging him i'm like find their their motivator right their chief complaint and speak to that and then one other trick that has helped me across dentistry altogether is is basically two simple questions okay in, let's hear in I love patient communication i love this the first is kira yes can i ask you a question of course okay i got the patient saying yes right ah uh, good okay. clever what is it about the sleep study that concerns me concerns you what is it about this implant that concerns you what is it about this crown that concerns you when you start seeing resistance in patients it's we think oftentimes it's money mm-hmm, and they might mm-hmm. even say money, mm-hmm. but I say, you know, let's just take costs completely out of it because mm-hmm. we'll find a way to make it affordable to you. Totally. It's my job to tell you what you need and it's your job to tell me what you want, but we can get you what you need. Um, it, it, like what, is there anything else that's preventing you from moving forward? Totally. And then it comes out, well, I had one lady who didn't want an implant. She goes, well, I just, I don't want a, a bone graft because my friend says you use cadaver bone or dentists use cadaver bone. Uh She doesn't uh know what kind of bone I use. And I'm like, this is a healed site. Like you don't even need a bone graft. (laughs) She goes, Oh, okay. But but my hygienist had come out of the room before I went in to tell me, don't talk to her about the implant. She doesn't want it. Right. And all I did was ask that question. Next thing you know, I'm doing an implant, you know? Uh, So I I love that. It's so simple. It is. And I talk about that right alongside of what you're saying. When you ask, I, I tell doctors all the time when you're done with a treatment plan, don't say, okay, do you have any questions? Because the reality is people walk into a dental office program to say no. Yeah. Do you want a shot? No. Do you want to be at the dentist? No. Do you want to pay for this bill? No. So if they're programmed to say no, yeah. you say, do you have any questions? They'll say no. Right. But similar to, I like what you said about the concern. You've taken it a step higher because I say, what questions do you have for me? Yeah. That opens up that opportunity of what questions you have, what concerns you about this? Because you're right. People will have surface level objections that are really just a symptom of an underlying root cause. Solve that root cause for them, and you've opened the door to say Fear, yes. schedule. Totally. Like, I don't have time for taking care of my... Well, now that I'm 42, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I got to get my act together here. I'll make time okay, fine. to go to the terminologist so I'm not breaking out like a 13-year-old girl. So Because that became your pain point. That okay. was my pain point. Like, oh, gosh, I, people are taking pictures of me. I better get this acne taken care of. So, yeah, I, it's like what m- is motivating. Mm-hmm, and some mm-hmm. of it was ta- me taking time, but when I made it a priority... So that's the same thing I try to do for my patients and whether it's sleep Smart. or whatever. Um, but sleep is, uh, obviously it's about a quarter of my practice. My, mm-hmm. my goal is to get the word out there that I still do dentistry. <laughs> it's just that <laughs> sleep is obviously my passion and expertise, but, um, I want to, it's such a hot topic that it is. I, I want to help, um, inspire people. And, you know, I said those top seven excuses or whatever they are. Uh, one of them is just people just aren't interested and that's okay. Mm-hmm, but at mm-hmm. the very least, at the very least, we need to at least know how to screen our patients and right. know where to send them. And I do totally. have dentists that refer to me. Awesome. Because I've, I've been out there speaking enough that for them to identify some of these things. And they're like, I don't want to mess with it. Just, just go send. see Aaron. And, yep. and I have enough of a relationship with the dental community in my mm-hmm. town um, that they know I'm not going to poach their patient or, right. you know, that I can just help them for this mm-hmm. and send them on, send them back. So no, it's been, it's exciting. That I is exciting. It. That's yeah. so fun. And I, I want to just tap into a little piece you said of, um, they're, they're just not interested. And I always say as doctors and as clinicians and as dental teams are, I think we have a moral obligation to, to tell our patients what are options out there. If you're like, well, no one's interested in sleep. I feel like it's your moral obligation to tell them of options that could yeah. that could help them. 
Um, I always use the example of I, I didn't have cavities, so people didn't offer me fluoride right. because they said, oh, Kira doesn't need that. And I'm like, you jerks, like just because you think I'm not interested, right. we don't, assume. don't hold out on me. And so I think it's the exact same thing with this of we assume people aren't interested. And because we assume that and our actions, we don't talk about it. Therefore, we have we have confirmed that people aren't interested when the truth is people are interested. People do want to know, but we're just not opening up an opportunity for that. Right. Well, even um, if you tell, ask a patient, are you satisfied with your smile? And they're like, yeah. Well, what about, uh, would you want if, I forget how I phrase it exactly, but it's kind of like, if you could may- wave a magic wand and take yes. all, any other concerns out of it, mm-hmm. is there anything that you would change? Uh, how Would you change your smile? And then they're like, well, this tooth right here has always <laughs> bothered me, but they put it out of their mind. Like, let's say they have a twisted number seven, mm-hmm. but they put it out of their mind because they think metal braces for two years and a whole bunch of money. Totally. And I'm like, well, we could fix that for $800 and whatever. Right. Like, really simply. And they're like, oh, oh, I didn't. Okay. I didn't know that was an option. So exactly. it's not a sale. It's not sales. It's like giving patients what they want. They just didn't know any better. And it, it's totally. same thing with sleep. They're just like, I, I didn't know that getting up three or four times a night wasn't normal. That's my new marketing campaign. That's not normal. It's not normal to sleep in a separate room from your spouse. It is I like not that. normal. <laughs> I to, like that campaign. To, yes. To need two energy drinks in the morning. Right. You know? Like right. you should be able to sleep through the night and wake up refreshed. And I love that you said that they don't realize that this isn't normal. Because right. so often we don't know what is quote unquote normal. This is just how I've always been. It's always been this way. And then it's like, wait you actually sleep all the way through the night or you sleep yeah. in the same room together? You're, you should be dreaming. Oh, I, I did not I, know that I was a thing. <laughs> so you're just going to imagine this pock faced acne ridden. <laughs> Don't worry guys. She's super rad. <laughs> person. Um, no, I did not. I thought everyone had a bump on the roof of their mouth until dental school. Really? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's one of those things that you just don't know until, you know, someone tells you differently. Right. So I mean, I'm hoping to, to we don't go around. Ta- and those are yeah. things that we don't go around usually talking about. Like, Hey, how often, how yeah. many times do you wake up in the middle of the night? Yep. Where does that come from? Yep. Most people, that's not a normal conversation. So I love that you've given a lot of real tangibles. I love your questions of what concerns you about this. It's really, really good. And I also love that you said, Hey, Kira, can I ask you a question? I gave you the yes. I really love that psychology because I was much more open. And yeah. I was like, Hey, Kira, what don't you like about a crown? Or what are your concerns about a crown? I'm not as like, even just feeling that me hearing that without saying, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm engaging him. I'm in yeah. a very happy space where it's like, well, what concerns you about a crown right out of the gate? I'm like, oh, shoot. I got to tell you what's <laughs> no, wrong. I to tell you. <laughs> you can see it in patients' eyes when they start glazing over because we're sitting there saying, well, first I'm going to prepare it by a half a millimeter <laughs> and we're going to take this porcelain felt spastic. You know, we just... <laughs> we got to be so smart because oh we're dental gosh. school. <laughs> That's why I always say, I'm like, there's a reason God made two ears and one mouth. You know, you've heard <laughs> yes, that. Yes. And we are terrible at over-educating and talking about things that patients don't care about. Yeah. So what I bring it back to is I summarize it. So Joe, if we can send you home with this home sleep test, we can see, I, I don't think you have, cause if you tell someone they have sleep apnea, they get really defensive too. I'm like, I don't think you have this, but we just need to make sure that we can rule out, you know, mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that your airways collapsing at night. I do. I like avoid sleep apnea, the term sleep apnea, because they I think it's an old fat apnea. man's disease. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, we just need to rule it out so that we can make you the right kind of night guard. Because bruxing and sleep apnea go hand in hand. Mm, that's 90, smart. Ninety percent of the time, it's sleep apnea. But I put them in a position where I don't really think you have this, but. We just need to make Let's sure. Let's just rule it out and make yeah. sure we're giving you what you actually need. Right. Not and guessing. There, and that is, I know it's a little psychology too, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, patients are much more open and willing. Um, and then I just bring it back to their pain point. So Got if, it. if you don't want more teeth fracturing, I think we really need to be a little proactive here. Let's do a crown before bad things happen, you Smart. know, and bring it back to their concern of when they travel their tooth is going to break again, Mm -hmm, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, whatever it is. And and if you have rapport with your patient, right, exactly. And that is a good point because what you say to one isn't the same for Mm -hmm. all. And so many doctors want to just get into a rogue, like this is what I say for sleep because it works. It's like, no, every patient's different. So you can have your rogue script, but make sure you, you customize it to the person sitting in front of you. 
Oh, Aaron, I love this. And I love how passionate you are about it. It's really fun. So, and if we're real lucky, I'm totally putting this on the air and this one I'm going to release. So Aaron, don't worry, this one's going out. (laughs) Um, But if we're real lucky, Summer and I chatted with Aaron about coming to WDC Women Dentists Connect in November. So we'll see if she can get her schedule there because I, I love that you are a really empowered woman. You um, have an incredible business. You're passionate about sleep. And you just, like you said, I, I come from humble roots, but you're, you've got a big dream and a big heart and you do a really incredible job for our, our profession. So super Thank excited. So Hopefully much. we can make that work out. Yeah. And thanks for being on the podcast yeah, today. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, guys, this is Aaron Elliott. If you have questions with sleep, Aaron, how do they get in touch with you? Well, I am on Facebook and If you want to see her pictures. Yes. Erin <laughs> uh, Elliott DDS. Two L's, two T's, two D's, but just... Hey, that's clever. <laughs> yeah. So um, just make sure you have something that says you're in the dental field mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I, you know, you get friend requests all the time and I'm like, I don't know, you know, I, I sure. anyways. Yeah. So just make sure, randoms. make sure and she then, knows. <laughs> and then the other is my email. So that's Aaron Elliott DDS two L's, two T's, two D's at gmail.com at gmail.com. All right. You guys, she has a fantastic course. A lot of my doctors that I work with have gone to your course. They love it. They don't even know how to get into sleep. They say you make it very easy for them and their teams. Make it as practical as possible. Yes. Which again, why I like you because we speak the same language, make it practical, tactile, get this done. So guys, if you're interested, Erin, I think she's one of the top leaders in the sleep industry. So definitely check her out. If you're thinking about it, reach out. She's like one of the nicest, funniest people too. So, <laughs> Oh, you know what? I have one more plug. Sorry. Okay, go for it. Go for it. I did start a dental sleep medicine podcast Ooh. with um, the owner of Medmark Media who um, puts out a dental sleep practice magazine. Cool. The editor of that magazine, Jason Tierney, is another co-host. We have a lot of fun just bringing um, awareness to sleep, but mostly for people even that are doing sleep, you will learn some stuff um, along the way. So awesome. Z-Pack, Z-Z-Z. P-A-C-K, get your daily dose of sleep, even though it's coming out bi-weekly. We need a different tagline. <laughs> it's get cool. Your it's cool. Dose of- <laughs> get your bi-weekly dose of sleep. Get your bi It doesn't flow as well. You guys can work on that. Yeah. That is in the refinement process. <laughs> yes. I love it. Thank so you. So guys, go check it out. Yes. Thank you again, Erin. I really appreciate your time right. today. And Dental Team listeners, thank you. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our Dental Team family. Now we're going to take it to the world. So help us out. Help us positively impact the world of dental by leaving us a review, leaving us five stars. This is how we can spread it to the masses and help even more people grow to a better version of themselves. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for being a part of my Dental 18 family.